Hi, YouTubers and wet savers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome 2024. So get a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on one minute. <laughs> I got my Captain's Choice coffee mug right here. Thanks again to Alex Lopez. One minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really, really good. That'll wake you up. Well, coffee of the month <laughs> for my nephew, Jason, his wife, Allison, and the boys. First one for the new year arrived. Here it is, Black Rifle Coffee Company, and I am using calf this morning. This is their extremely caffeinated coffee brew right here. And uh, as they say here <laughs> on their product page, let me bring it up for you right here. This is what happens when you turn a bunch of mad scientists loose in the coffee lab. The only roast worthy of its name, Calf, is our most highly caffeinated medium roast coffee designed for the folks who need to pull out all the stops. Caffeinate responsibly. Yeah, this is really, really terrific. And it's got a nice bold flavor. Hang on a minute. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that's great. <laughs> and it'll definitely wake you up. And again, the uh, Captain's Choice Coffee Mug, courtesy of viewer Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you again very, very much. Really appreciate it. Well, again, Happy New Year to everyone out there. Thanks so much for tuning in and having a cup of coffee with me as we kick off 2024. Great to see you. Got a great show for you this morning. Oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, we've got, we got to kick off the new year with a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Absolutely. Hang on. Another, <laughs> another good jolt this morning. And again, national holiday here in the United States, probably around the world. So uh, a lot of us have the day off today. But if you're one of those individuals that is going into work today, hey, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate the uh, morning drive with you this morning. Thanks for taking me along on your morning commute. Again, we've got a really, really good show for you this morning. And uh, well, let's see, we've got a really nice, we've got a really, really neat shaving tip. We've got, uh, let me see here, my top, I got my topics right here. Yeah, got a really, really neat shaving tip. Got a little bit of a shave den visit. I got a holiday recipe for you, for those of you out there who like to bake. Uh, that comes courtesy of a cartooning friend, uh, Polly Keener, very, very talented uh, cartoonist. Uh, we also have some great topics and refill. Got some new wet shave gear to talk about and some questions and comments. So that kind of rounds it out. Uh, for today's show, kicking off 2024. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. So let's kick the show off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Paul Denali, uh, and that's spelled D-E-N-A-L-I, Denali. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Paul. And Paul writes, recently I've been using the Phoenix Shaving Intergalactic Travel Scuttle. Feels so good to get a warm lather now that the colder months are here. Although it felt nice and warm for the first shave, the lather was rather soupy for my first few tries. I started out using my daily driver brush that has a 25 millimeter knot, which I typically use with my Pereira shaving bowl. That bowl is noticeably larger than the Phoenix Shaving Travel Scuttle. I decided to try one of my smaller brushes that has a 20 millimeter knot. And guess what? Boom! Lather! <laughs> it seems the smaller knot has more room to swirl around in the scuttle and create a much bigger and still warm lather. I pass this along so that other shavers might try downsizing to a smaller size knot if they are using a smaller bowl or mug than they are used to. Keep up the good work, Mark. Love watching your Monday morning mailbag. Paul Denali. Paul, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic shaving tip. There you go, folks. If uh, you're using a... Uh, uh, a scuttle like the uh, Phoenix Shaving Travel Scuttle, which is a little smaller in size for travel purposes, obviously, 
or a smaller shaving ball of some kind and you're not getting the desired result from your lather, try a smaller uh, shave brush. Uh, this is the Rockwell 20 millimeter shaving brush right here. Great for travel, great as a daily driver at home as well. Does a really, really nice job. Has a synthetic 20 millimeter knot and a really nice diminutive, diminutive compact handle. And yeah, that'll do a nice job uh, <laughs> working up a lather in something the size of the Phoenix Shaving Travel Scuttle. So give that a try, folks. Try a smaller shaving brush, not 20 millimeters, something like that, and see if that helps improve your lather uh, when you're using a smaller lathering bowl or smaller scuttle like the uh, Phoenix Shaving Travel Scuttle. Hey, Paul, thanks very, very much. A really, really great shaving tip. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post Haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the morning shaving tip segment of the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Paul, thanks very, very much for a useful shaving tip. Something new for uh, wet shavers out there to try if they have smaller shaving bowls. Really, really do appreciate it. Thanks again, Paul. Well, this morning we have a shave den visit of sorts, and it comes from viewer James Gazda, also known as Jim from Northfield. Uh, and Jim writes, hey, Mark, I wanted to share this photo of my latest edition. It's a supply SE razor, stand, leather case, brush, post-shave balm, shaving cream, and two injector dispensers, all new, never used. Best of all, I purchased all this from eBay for just $43 total price. What a deal. Wow, absolutely fabulous deal. My gosh. Uh, Jim continues here. Also, when it arrives next week sometime, I got the best deal ever from an eBay seller. It is something very, very rare and very valuable. Hint, it's a vintage Gillette. I'll share a photo when it arrives. Have a great week. Jim, wow, Jim, thanks very much for the little bit of a tease there on this really, really wonderful, rare, valuable vintage Gillette razor. Looking forward to seeing that one. And congratulations on a great find uh, on the Supply SE razor and all the other items in that package because uh, Supply does sell a starter kit which consists of the Supply SE razor. Here's mine right here. Love this razor. This is my go-to razor for head shaves. Uh, anyhow, their starter kit uh, consists of the Supply SE razor, uh, one dispenser of injector razor blades, shaving cream, aftershave balm, and a shave brush. And that's it. They don't. Uh, they don't. They don't throw in the uh, the case, the leather case, or the stand. Uh, the starter kit that Supply sells with those one, two, three, four, five items uh, retails for ninety nine dollars. Regularly one hundred thirty dollars. It's on sale right now for ninety nine dollars. But you got uh, so much more for only forty three dollars. <laughs> that's fantastic. That is really, really awesome. Congratulations on that. And again, folks, there are some really, really great, great deals out there in wet shave gear. Uh, so you just have to do a little bit of research. You have to be a little bit patient. You have to do your due diligence and uh, know what the price of some of these uh, vintage razors and new razors are going for. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, again, do your homework. That's uh, what we've been talking about in previous Monday morning mailbags, especially when it comes to buying a vintage Gillette razor online from eBay or Etsy. Kind of, you know, do your research. Kind of, kind of know the history of these razors, what they look like, their various characteristics, so you know exactly what it is that you're looking at and what you're going to purchase, whether it be on Etsy, eBay, or uh, some other online seller. Uh, and uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim proves to us over and over and over again that there are these great deals out there. You just have to uh, be patient and uh, know what uh, 
No what it is that you're buying specifically. And he got something brand new, uh, great items for $43 in the way of a supply SE razor and all that other great gear to go with it. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. Hey, Jim, thanks very much for sharing that photo of your new acquisition to your shaving den. Really do appreciate it. And looking forward to seeing a photo of that vintage Gillette find. Uh, really, really curious about that. We will show all the viewers out there as soon as you <laughs> alert us to it, send us the information on it. Looking forward to that one. Thanks again, Jim. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have a holiday recipe to share with you, and it comes courtesy of my good friend Polly Keener, a very, very talented cartoonist who I've known for many, many years. Uh, she sent along a really delightful Christmas card this year. Here it is right here. We'll put it on screen so you can get a better look at it. And at the top it reads, Holiday Cookie Decorating for Cartoonists. <laughs> this is more fun than spreading colors with knives and safer for small children. Take it from me. I know I'm a grandma. So there's some instruction there. But at the bottom it says, My favorite holiday cookie and frosting recipes are included enjoy and sure enough when you opened up the card there was this really wonderful and delightful recipe that polly included uh in her own handwriting huh how about that it's for sugar cookies and frosting right here now what i've done is i've scanned this in and i've uploaded it to my google drive and i'll make the link available below so when you click on it you'll get a pdf file you can download and you can have this recipe uh, right here, and you can bake these cookies if you want to. It really is a terrific recipe, and Polly has some wonderful, wonderful penmanship, so you're not going to have any trouble reading this at all. She's got great penmanship, uh, but this is her recipe for sugar cookies and frosting. So check it out. We'll have the link below where you can download this really wonderful recipe. Uh, and uh, you know what? We're still in the holiday season, the 12 days of Christmas is what we're still in right now. I think that ends on the Feast of the Epiphany. So it's still the holiday season. Uh, and uh, so you can bake these up for the remainder of the holiday season or download it, file it away, and uh, bake some of uh, these cookies for Christmas 2024. How about that? So my thanks to uh, Polly Keener for very, very kindly sending along this recipe in a really, really delightful Christmas card this year. Polly, Thank you very, very much. Folks, we'll have the link below where you can download this, uh, this recipe from Polly Keener. Yeah, in her own handwriting uh, with this beautiful penmanship. She's a really talented cartoonist, great penmanship. Uh, it looks like an absolutely awesome recipe. Hey, thanks again, Polly. Really do appreciate it. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more. And the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Again, just search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and both of those podcasts will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and now right here on YouTube. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low, that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Oh, <laughs> what a great way to kick off 2024. Had a great shave before cameras rolled. We'll talk about that a little bit also in this segment. Uh, a great coffee mug. <laughs> thanks again, Alex Lopez. And a great coffee. Thanks to uh, Jason, Allison, and the boys. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, coffee of the Month. Uh, yeah, kicking off 2024 with a super-fueled calf brew. <laughs> Highly caffeinated coffee to get you going. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. Hang on. One more. Mmm, that is a terrific, terrific cup of coffee. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And again, Happy New Year. Thanks for tuning in on New Year's Day, New Year's morning. Really, really do appreciate it. Got some really, really neat topics in refill this morning. Let's kick it off with something from Christian Ortlep. 
Uh, and he writes, Merry Christmas, Mark. I looked up several blades, and it seems that it's like you said. Double wrap blades have no glue dots like the single wrapped ones have. Sadly, my favorite blades have the most glue on them, feather blades. I think I could rub the glue off for ages. And yes, it really looks like it disaligns a lot. It really glues itself to the top cap and changes its shape. Here, I really agree to uh, David Martin, Ohio Shaves, with his get rid of the goo. Take care and get well into 2024. Greetings from Germany. Christian, Christian, thank you so much for uh, checking in from Germany. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, and thanks for confirming, uh, as I recalled, that double wrap blades don't have any glue dots on them. That was how I recalled it. And uh, I, I, again, my experience with double wrap blades is such that I don't recall seeing any glue on them, uh, which is why I don't think I've noticed too much glue on other razor blades because I... I've, I've been using razor blades that tend to be double wrapped is what I'm saying. Uh, and when there is glue on a razor blade, uh, for some reason, I haven't really noticed any misalignment with the blade. Now, you know, it might be there. I, I just, it just doesn't register with me. That's just kind of been my experience. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to pay attention to it a little more closely. Let me put it to you that way. And the only time where I really notice the glue is when the paper adheres to the blade. You know, as I open it up and I'm tearing it away, there's that little chunk of paper left on that glue dot on the blade. Then I kind of have to work off that paper and sometimes uh, I'll remove the glue with it. So um, that's kind of been my experience. But uh, Christian, thank you very, very much. First, for, for uh, checking in from Germany. really do appreciate that. And thanks for the Christmas wishes. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and yours. And uh, thanks again for uh, the observation that double wrap blades don't have any of the uh, glue dots on them. Thanks very much. Really do appreciate that. Viewer Jay writes, Great 3MB. My apologies for my late viewing, but with three kids in the house going crazy and my Christmas ham to cook, I don't get a chance to blow my nose. <laughs> so now I have me time. Sat by a nice fire with a fine cigar slowly being smoked, I can finally get my weekly dose of your channel. I hope you, your family, and all the viewers had a magical Christmas. Wow, Jay, thanks very, very much. Sounds like a great way to take in the Monday morning mailbag. Thank you so much for doing so. I really do appreciate it. And thanks very much for the uh, Christmas and holiday wishes. And Happy New Year to uh, you and yours. Absolutely fantastic. Viewer All the RPM wrote, I've noticed when you bloom a puck with water, it loses its smell faster. I just go right in with a brush without blooming it. Works great and sent to the last shave too. Now that's very, very interesting, The uh, all the RPM. Really do appreciate the comment. Uh, I always bloom my soaps. And uh, I'm wondering if anyone out there, if you bloom your soaps and do a brush load, have you noticed any loss of scent? I can't say that I have. Maybe it loses a little bit, but the scent is still there. And uh, I have found that as long as I let the puck dry out properly for a good 24 hours, at least 24 hours, and recap tightly, uh, there hasn't been uh, any scent loss that I can recall. Uh, and uh, I'm, it's just been kind of my observation. Now, I'm going to have to go through some of the soaps that I haven't used in a while and open them up and sample them and see if the scent is still there. But so far, so good. You know, knock wood. It seems that the scent of a lot of the shave soaps that I have seem to be uh, seem to be there. There's also another factor here that uh, Rod from Sterling Soap Company pointed out to me. It's olfactory overload. Sometimes as you're sampling all these shave soap scents, maybe if you're doing it in your shave den and doing one after another, you know what? <laughs> you have this tendency to overload your sense of smell where it's, you know, that next shave soap in line isn't really registering. So that might come into play as well. But I'm interested, folks, are you doing a dry brush load? You're just weighing the brush a little bit and then loading loading from the puck like that? Or are you blooming the soap? Uh, which is your preferred method? And have you experienced any scent loss from doing uh, uh, from blooming the soap. That's what I'd like to know. So comment below, let us know. All the RPM, thanks so much for the comment. Really do appreciate it. 
MWM302 wrote, I checked out Town's storefront from your link, and they are a lot like Phoenix shaving. Lots of whimsical fragrances, almost too many to choose from. They actually have one that smells like paper money. Yeah, this is in regards to Frenchy Shave Soap uh, from Talon Soap Factory. This was sent to the channel very kindly by a viewer, Kenny Embry. Kenny, thank you again very, very much. This is oak wood and French vanilla. This is a terrific shave soap. Beautiful, beautiful scent. And it made heaps and heaps of lather. The review ran pat this past Wednesday. And uh, this figures into uh, the uh, refill segment here in a little bit. So <laughs> stay tuned. But yeah, a terrific, terrific shaving soap. Absolutely Beautiful, beautiful scent, and again, it makes great, great lather. I'm going to have to get back up to the uh, to their uh, storefront on Etsy because I didn't notice the one uh, that smells like paper money, but I'm definitely going to check out some more of their shave soap scents. Uh, the aftershave also is terrific. Uh, I really, really recommend Frenchie Shave Soap and Aftershave Splash. Really a terrific scent, and... Uh, Man, did this make a lot of lather. Absolutely made heaps and heaps of lather. So check it out again. Frenchie Shave Soap from Talent Soap Factory. They have a storefront on Etsy. We will link it below again. My thanks again to Kenny Embry for very kindly and generously sending this along to the channel. Really do appreciate it, Kenny. Thanks very, very much. And MWM302, thanks for that heads up on uh, the uh, storefront the Talent Soap Factory storefront up on Etsy. I'm going to go back and visit again and look for that one that uh, <laughs> has a scent of paper money. Gonna going to get something else from them. It's really, they just really wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful lathering shave soaps. Absolutely. And I love that artwork. Uh, absolutely love that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, there are some similarities with Phoenix shaving in that regard. So thanks for pointing that out. Uh, Mike Perrite wrote, that's P-E-R-R-I-T-T-E. I hope I hope I pronounced that correctly, Mike. Mike Perrite wrote, uh, another great Monday morning mailbag. The new Yates winning razor still has the magnet in the handle. The top cap has more of a shaving surface area and scalloped. The bottom plate is similar, just mainly reduced in weight, but also tighter tolerances. To me, it's still a mild shaver, but much more efficient than the old one. Uh, with the new design, I get less suction feeling as it almost feels like a regular DE razor. I no longer get clogging unless I use those blades with heavy glue spots, so no fault of the razor. I normally use the leaf razor, but have reached for this more often unless I have irritation from something. The new winning razor also has an awesome grip on the handle. Yeah, we talked about the, uh, the, the new winning razor being offered by Yates. Hang on one minute. Let me, get, let me get my winning razor. Hang on one minute. Let me get it for you. Okay, here it is right here. Yeah, forgot to put it out for this segment. Here it is right here. This is the uh, last version of the winning razor that was sold by uh, the Wet Shaving, Wet Shaving Club, I think is what they were called. Uh, anyhow, uh, this one uh, came with the machine finish. But I uh, acquired this one from uh, viewer Charles Smith, who did this beautiful mirror polish to it. So uh, the, uh, the original was uh, just a machine finish, and he polished this out, and uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, I understand the, the suction uh, that uh, Mike is talking about, because the lathering channels are just a series of holes right there. I don't know what they are on the newer version, uh, and... Uh, the, the the cap on, on the one that I have is not scalloped. It's just a smooth cap right there. Let me get my O-ring back on there like that. And the handle has some, I guess you could say, some grooves cut into it or some ribbing cut into it. With the machine finish, probably a little better grip. The grip on this is not bad at all, even though it's polished. And I can always use the Allen block trick. And, of course, the uh, the really nice feature is that magnet on the bottom there, and it's, I'm glad to hear that it's still on the newer versions. Now here's a razor blade, an ABS razor blade right here. It's still in the wrapper. I'm just going to keep it in the wrapper for fear of make, making sure I don't cut myself while I'm on camera. So we'll just put that on the uh, on the counter there, on the table there, and you can just take that magnet on the handle and just like that, pick it right up. That's absolutely a fantastic feature. Uh, that is absolutely great. And, uh, you know, I have used that every once in a while when the blade is, you know, for whatever reason, I accidentally 
The blade falls flat on the counter. I just get this and just pick that up. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, fantastic feature of the Razor. So yeah, Mike, thanks very, very much for doing some comparison and contrast of the newer winning razor with the older winning razor. And again, let us know what those lathering channels are like on the newer version. Uh, because yeah, there is a little bit of a uh, little bit of suction there. And yes, I found my, I find myself rinsing this a little more often than other razors because I don't think that uh, those lathering channels move the lather out of the way like others. But it's still a really good razor. Uh, a nice mild uh, razor. Uh, the newer one you say is a little more efficient. I can understand that. Uh, maybe because of the lathering channels, maybe because, as you say, they change the surface area uh, of the, uh, the surface surface shaving area of the razor head, I think is what you're saying here. So yeah, uh, you know what? If you have anything additional to add to those comments, Mike, please comment below and let us know. But thanks very, very much for the update on the uh, Yates winning razor. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Jimmy V Photography wrote, people on blood thinners need to be aware of the side effects of turmeric. Now, this is in regards to something we talked about on Second Cup. Rodney Ripplinger had pointed out to us uh, the Vico turmeric shaving cream with sandalwood. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about this in New Wet Shaving Gear, so just kind of file this away when we get to that. Uh, and... Um, uh, Jimmy writes, people on blood thinners need to be aware of the side effects of turmeric. I'm on blood thinners and have been warned to not take turmeric. I'm pretty sure there's not enough in shave cream to cause interaction as it's not ingested, but just something to think about. Uh, yeah, and he also says, totally agree. The Bishop's Wife is a wonderful movie. Had three of my favorite actors turning in epic performances. Yeah, we recommend uh, movies books, streaming shows, that sort of thing at the end of the Second Cup podcast. And this past week, uh, we recommended, it, um, well, actually three, It's a Wonderful Life uh, in passing. We recommended that one because that's kind of a no-brainer. Everyone's going to watch that <laughs> on Christmas. Uh, White Christmas with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. That's a, that's a great musical. And of course, one of my favorites, uh, The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant, David Niven. Uh, a really terrific, terrific movie. If you haven't seen it, uh, really, uh, you know, take the time to watch that one. It's a really terrific, terrific Christmas movie. And yeah, Cary Grant is wonderful in this movie, as is David Niven and the entire cast. Yeah, it's a classic. It really is. So thanks very much for the heads up on turmeric, uh, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. And I think last week I was pronouncing it turmeric, but I've heard it pronounced both ways. Now, maybe turmeric and turmeric are two different things. I don't know, but I've heard it pronounced similar. So I'm going to try to say turmeric the way it's spelled, T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks very much for the heads up on that, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. Uh, viewer Kevin Weiss wrote, you missed the boom lather thingy. Great video as usual. Happy New Year, buddy. Hey, Kevin, <laughs> thanks very, very much. He's referring to last week's review of uh, Frenchie Shave Soap from Talon Soap Factory. Uh, I forgot the boom lather. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I forgot the boom lather. Uh, so uh, to make up for it, before cameras rolled, we had a shave and we used Frenchie Shave Soap again and we built a lather. Check it out. Okay, I've already got my pre-shave in place, and here is the Talent Soap Factory Frenchy Shave Soap right there. Hot water, going to dump it right into the sink. Here's my Paul Gruner lathering bowl. Thanks again, Jimmy V. We're going to dump that in there. And here is my Simpson M7 shave brush with the butterscotch handle. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> All right, so here it is right here, Frenchy Shave Soap. This is what I'm using right here. Okay, and there's the label on the sign, Talent Soap Factory, right there. All right, just to let you know that that's what I'm using. And we're going to go ahead and load this brush. And again, I got the pre-shave all ready to go. And, uh, yeah, probably about, man, that's creaming up nicely. <laughs> I just really love the scent. Absolutely love the scent. All right, here we go. I think that'll, I think that'll get it done. A little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl, but I'm going to be able to use that. Ouch, sorry. <laughs> My mistake. Everything's okay. Here we go. Check it out. There it is. A 
Look at that. All right. Look at that. It's starting to, starting to overflow. My gosh. Look at that. Boy, that's lathering up really, really well. And again, this, this Frenchy shave soap scent is marvelous. The oak wood and French vanilla, really, really terrific. Okay, you can, <laughs> you can hear the brush there a little bit again on the bowl. Oh man, I'm just scraping off the knob a little bit because I just want to get that back into the bowl and work it back in. Look at that. Look at, look at that. Look at that. I mean, check that out. Look at that. Boom! Lather! <laughs> yeah, absolutely fantastic. We're going to go ahead and just start painting this up. Boy, that's a nice lather again. This, uh, this shave stuff, I've used it uh, several times now, and each time the lather has been absolutely wonderful. Just fantastic. And of course, the M7 Simpson Shave Brush, thanks again to Jimmy B. Uh, really, really did a great, just did a great job. Just, it's just a fantastic, fantastic brush for bowl lather. It really does a great job. Matter of fact, I could just dip that into a little bit of water there. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that's marvelous. Wow, what a great lather. I just could just, can kind of build another layer on top of that if I want to. Wow. Okay. Wow, what an absolutely fantastic, fantastic lather. It just lathered so quickly and so well. Look at that. Look at that. I'm telling you, look at that. Look at those pink. I bet, you know what? That's worth another boom lather. <laughs> yeah, it just lathers really, really well. Just a great, great lathering shave soak. Uh, once again, from Talent Soap Factory, uh, Frenchy shave soap. Absolutely fantastic. All right, so uh, I'm going to load up my, my Metaphor Brass Razor from Phoenix Shaving, and I'm going to use a, uh, an A-Best uh, A-Best razor blade, and I'm going to have a shave, and I'll see you back at the uh, Monday morning mailbag. Okay, here we go. 30 degrees, a light touch. Let the razor do all the work, gentlemen. Well, I hope that makes up for my lack of a boom lather during last week's review of Frenchy Shave Soap from Talent Soap Factory. My apologies to Aaron of Talent Soap Factory and Kenny Embry for accidentally omitting the boom lather. But as you can see, it's worthy of a couple of boom lathers. It absolutely did a fantastic job. It made heaps and heaps of lather. And my thanks also to Jimmy V Photography for very kindly sending along the Paul Gruner Shaving Bowl and also the Simpson M7 Shaving Brush with the Butterscotch Handle Thanks, Mom. Absolutely fantastic pieces of shaving gear to make a lather with. Really, really terrific stuff. So uh, there you have it, uh, Frenchy Shave Soap with a couple of boom lathers. Thanks again to uh, Aaron of Talent Soap Factory and Kenny Embry and also to Jimmy V Photography. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Viewer Wally Pankowski sent along the following email regarding a new acquisition for his shave den from Norton Custom Design. Now, we've talked about Norton Custom Design before on the show. Uh, they make these beautiful 3D printed razor cases, razor stands, brush cases, that sort of thing. And Wally writes, Mark, first off, Merry Christmas. Hey, Wally, thank you very, very much, and a Happy New Year to you as well. I just received the following from Norton Custom Design. One, a travel case for the Rockwell T2. Two, a travel case for the Blackland Blackbird. Three, a razor stand for five razors. The travel cases allow for the razor to also stand in the case after use to allow it to dry. In addition, they are designed to carry a tuck of blades 
and the holes are precision made to eliminate as much rattle and movement inside the case as possible. What makes the stand different from others is that the stand is designed to lean a fraction to the rear. Also, it's designed to allow the razors to remain in place without the possibility of rotating and hitting the razor next to it. Best of all, the height of the stands is designed to allow the heads of the razors to remain open just enough to allow air to dry the heads. This is just a perfect stand. I am sure that upon request, Zach can accommodate customized requests for color and number of razors. Attached are some pictures. Well, Wally, thanks very, very much for sending this along and a heads up on some beautiful 3D printed items from Zach at Norton Custom Design. Really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll have a link below to Norton Custom Design's storefront on Etsy so you can check it out yourself and contact Zach. Thanks again, Wally. Really do appreciate it. Well, in previous Monday Morning Mailbags and also in previous Second Cup podcasts, viewer Rodney Ripplinger introduced us to Parasso Wooden Spice Shave Cream and also to the 3P Balm and Pre-Shave. And he sent along the following review and he wrote, Hi, Mark. I thought I would tell you a bit about Parasso Wooden Spice and the 3P Balm and Pre-Shave. When I received the Parasso, I had already shaved for the day. Wanting to sample the scent, I squeezed out the tiniest bit of soap out of the tube and rubbed it on the back of my hand. It is a very nice woody scent, but not exceptionally strong. It did stay with me in the solid soap form all day until at least midnight. The soap is quite thick and is not easy to squeeze from the tube. The tube hung upside down with the cap off probably would not leak any soap out. I muddled a very small of soap with a small amount of water in my bowl. The amount of lather created was about the same as I usually make with a cream or soap puck. Very economical. The consistency was about the same as regular Parasso cream soap. I think this product was created to be more economical than Parasso standard creams. Being a product that was mostly available to barbers, that makes sense. Also, the scent was to be unique to the barber shop. If a larger amount of soap was used, I imagine you would get more of a yogurt consistency in your lather. I ordered the 3P because it could be used as a pre-shave and also a balm. I have only used it as a balm. This is fantastic stuff. I can't compare it to a Parasso product because I have used only Parasso soaps and creams. It doesn't take much when applied and it's not greasy. It only takes a few moments for it to be absorbed into your skin. It makes your skin feel very smooth and soft. Well, there you have it, folks. A really nice review from Rodney Ripplinger uh, regarding Parasso Wooden Spice Shave Cream and also uh, the 3P Balm and Pre-Shave. Really neat item. And uh, I've got... I've got that one on my uh, wish list for sure that I'm really interested in using that because I have used the uh, Parasso uh, aftershave balm. So uh, also the Parasso pre-shave. So I'm really looking forward to comparing 3P to Parasso aftershave balms and also the pre-shave. So thanks again, Rodney, for the uh, review on both of these. I really do appreciate it. Viewer Tim Whitcup sent along this heads up regarding a new safety razor from a company called Dovo. Uh, and Tim writes, this company broke away from Mercur and is now its own company. I believe this is their first safety razor. Tim is referring to the Dovo Primo safety razor. Now it comes in two styles, a standard handle style and also a diamond handle style. Uh, the standard handle it looks like it's a standard kind of knurling that they do, uh, a little deeper uh, on the handle. And the diamond handle looks like it's a little more polished. And the knurling that they have on there, I call it knurling, uh, is a little closer to the surface, so to speak, not as deep has a little more of a polish and shine to it. So uh, each of these razors, the two versions, uh, retail for $49.95. So you can buy either the standard knurled handle or the diamond 
uh, handle. Uh, and um, both of these razors are available at the Razor Emporium for $49.95 each. And Matt Pasarsik has a really, really terrific video introducing these razors, and we will link to his YouTube channel so you can get a look at those razors firsthand and uh, learn a little bit about Dovo and how they broke away from Merker. And, and again, both of those razors are available at the Razor Emporium. And uh, they retail for $49.95, as I recall. So uh, thanks again to Tim Whitcup for the heads up on the new Dovo Primo safety razor that you can get either with their standard handle or their diamond handle. Uh, and each of those razors retails again for $49.95, as I recall. So we'll have all those links below where you can learn more about the Dovo Primo Safety Razor. Thanks again, Tim. Really do appreciate it. Well, earlier in the show, Jimmy V Photography sent along a cautionary note regarding ingesting turmeric if you are on blood thinners. Thanks again for that, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. Now, why are we talking about turmeric? Because Rodney Ripplinger sent along this heads up on Vico Turmeric Shaving Cream. Now, this is available in India. And uh, he wrote, uh, Mark, I'd love to try some of this stuff sometime. I might take an almost unscented cream I have and add some turmeric when bowl lathering. See what happens. Yeah, that's kind of what's going on with this shaving cream. They've added turmeric. Now, what is turmeric? Now, I've been seeing a lot of online discussion uh, regarding turmeric for some reason. I don't know why it's coming up on my feed. Maybe it's because <laughs> I received this email from Rodney and the word turmeric triggered something in my browser. I don't know. But uh, there are a lot of um, health claims made regarding the use of turmeric. It lessens inflammation, it improves memory, it lessens pain, it fights free radicals, that sort of thing. But Vico shaving cream has turmeric in it. And uh, as they say here, Vico turmeric shaving cream with sandalwood oil is not only useful for shaving, but it also moisturizes the skin, gives a cooling effect, and works as an antiseptic for aftershave effects. It is used in the treatment of boils, pimples, acne, and allergic rashes, also useful in burns and cuts. Uh, get a day-long bloom and freshness with just one shave. And the ingredients of Vico Turmeric Shaving Cream, uh, the ingredients are turmeric and sandalwood oil. Now, this goes back to uh, a health practice in India called Ayurveda, or Ayurveda. That's spelled A-Y- U-R-V-E-D-A, and it's pronounced either Ayurveda or Ayurveda. We're going to go with Ayurveda. And as they write here, uh, Ayurveda is an alternative medicine system with historical roots in the Indian subcontinent. It is heavily practiced in India and Nepal, where around 80% of the population report using Ayurveda. And again, Vico Shave Cream has turmeric in it. And turmeric is one of these, I guess, spices that is used in the Ayurveda uh, medicine system. Uh, I think I'm piecing that together correctly. Anyhow, uh, viewer Ashish Ahuja sent along the following regarding Vico Shave Cream. I believe he uh, heard us heard our discussion on the Second Cup podcast, and he sent this along. Hi, Mark. The Vico Shave Cream, available in two versions, Sandalwood and Classic. This particular shave cream has been a staple in India for decades, earning its reputation as the workhorse of the industry. It's often likened to the Indian version of Paraso. The Vico Shave Cream is favored by many wet shavers due to its budget-friendly nature and no-nonsense performance. It's a reliable choice, perfect for travel, as it's inexpensive, easy to lather, and works well in various water conditions, be it hard or soft. One of the key ingredients in the Vico Shave Cream is turmeric. As you may know, turmeric holds a special place in Indian households for its various health benefits. We often use it as a first aid remedy. Applying turmeric to cuts, nicks, or wounds can help stop bleeding. Additionally, 
Turmeric is a common ingredient in our food preparations as it's not uncommon to consume it in warm milk when someone is sick with fever or a viral infection. Incorporating turmeric into a shave cream seems like a thoughtful touch. Beyond its potential antiseptic properties, turmeric could offer soothing and calming effects on the skin, making it a unique addition to the shaving experience. While it may not be the most luxurious option, it gets the job done efficiently. The cream has average slickness and might be a bit less moisturizing, so you may want to follow up with a balm post-shave, especially during winters. However, considering its affordability and the quality it offers at that price point, it's definitely worth the investment. The sandalwood version is known for its relaxing and calming scent, adding a pleasant touch to your shaving routine. Surprisingly, the classic version is more popular in India, particularly during the hot summers, thanks to its refreshing barbershop scent with a menthol kick. I encourage you to give both versions, classic and sandalwood, a try. Despite their average performance, the no-nonsense approach and budget-friendly nature make them worthwhile additions to any shaved in. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts after you've had a chance to test them out. Best regards, Ashish. Ashish, thank you so much for all the great information regarding turmeric and Vico shaving cream and uh, Ayurveda. Uh, really, really do appreciate it. it. Gives us a lot of great background. And yes, I am very intrigued in trying Vico turmeric shaving cream. Thanks very, very much. So there you are, folks. Some great information regarding Vico turmeric shaving cream. Thanks very much to Rodney Ripplinger and also to Ashisha Huja for some great, great information regarding it. We will have links below, folks, where you can check it out yourself. Thanks again, Rodney. Thank you again, Ashish. Well, we have another Boonda Beard Artisan Shave Soap to share with you this week. As you know, a viewer, Dr. Edward de Villiers, very kindly sent along a sampling of Boonda Beard Artisan Shave Soaps all the way from Pretoria, South Africa. This week, we'd like to show you On the Berg. Yeah, this is a really, really neat offering. Now, uh, in getting ready for this segment, I read up on this. This is really, really very, very neat. Here's what they write on their product page. Uh, this soap hits you with some serious creamy stuff and a very strong, sweet smell. If you like your lather to keep its fragrance throughout the shave and want something that will leave a trail of fragrance as you leave your house, this is one to try. Its blend of cedarwood, patchouli, lavender, and rose geranium takes me to the slopes of Talfelberg on a misty, dewy morning. So from there, its name on the berg right there. Yeah, the soft shaving soap is a combination of tallow and vegetable soap, making it quite unique. This marriage works magically. The softer soap makes for quicker and more luxurious loading on the brush, and it can easily be worked into any other container of your choice without the need for heating it or grating it down. This is a must-have in every hardcore shaver's inventory. Now, this is not the soft version. Uh, I will show it to you here. And this is, a, this is a marvelous scent. It really, really is. This is, oh, this is, this is really marvelous. My gosh. <laughs> I'm going to shave with this one, but this is the harder puck. This is the harder version. And as they write here, the harder version of the soap has a plant oil and glycerin base, which is a new addition to our offerings. Now, I'm going to stop right there because we just did a review of Shark Dive this past Friday, and that is a glycerin-based soap from them, and it was marvelous. It made a beautiful, beautiful lather, probably one of the best glycerin uh, soaps I've used in, in terms of uh, cushion and lather quality, slickness, glide, really, really terrific. This promises to deliver similar results. Uh, this soap was specifically developed as a combination soap for shaving, body, beard, and hair washing, a high quality product that performs very well in any of these tasks. The result is a single bar of soap that can be used for those times when you cannot pack a lot, but still need to come out the other side looking and smelling a million bucks. 
As this soap is made from sustainably sourced palm oil, it can also be classified as vegan. Since it is harder, it is also a bit more economical than the softy and also comes in slightly cheaper in purchase price on account of less ingredients. Wow, this is terrific. So it's hard, it's economical, it can be used for shaving, for body, for hair, for beard, and the scent is marvelous. This is really, really terrific. So uh, check this one out. Uh, check out this version, the hard version. They also have a soft version, but we have the hard version here of On the Berg. This is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful scent. Yeah, <laughs> it is great. It will make you look and feel a million bucks. Uh, I'm very, very confident in that just based on the scent and also based on the, uh, the size, uh, the hardness, the utility of it. Uh, for shave, for body, for hair, for beard. Yeah, this is this this is great. This is an absolutely great, great system. Uh, again, perfect for travel. I mean, you could just pack this, and now you're covered uh, across the board. Uh, you shower with it, shave with it. Absolutely fantastic. Definitely, definitely, definitely going to do a review of this one. Really looking forward to it. So that's on the Berg from the folks at Boonda Beard Artisan Shave Soaps. Again, my thanks to Dr. Edward de Villiers for very, very kindly sending this along. Uh, folks, we will have a link to this and also to the Boonda Beard website. Thanks again, Edward. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> Viewer Simon Hazanov very kindly and generously sent along a soap sampling from Southern Witchcraft. Now, viewers have talked about Southern Witchcraft before on the channel in the comments section. Uh, many claim that this does a great job in building a lather, especially for a non-tallow shaving soap. And Simon very, very kindly sent along a wonderful sampling. Uh, he sent along a card and he wrote, uh, Dear Mark, Merry Christmas from across the pond. Don't think you've tried this brand before. Hope it brings loads of boom, lather moments and other joys in 2024. Kind regards, Simon Hazanoff. Hey, Simon, thank you very, very much. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to using these and reviewing them on the channel. We're going to place these in the shave den for sure. This is their uh, barbershop scent right here. Uh, it's called uh, Deserology. And boy, oh boy. That is nice. That's a nice, nice barbershop scent. That really, really is. There's another one here that I was really taken with. Here it is, Sahwing. Yeah, this is really terrific. Yeah. Oh, that is really, really wonderful. Yeah. So a lot of other scents here to explore. And uh, we're, again, we're, like I say, we're going to add this to the shave den and we're, we're going to break some of these out and use and review them and share them with all the viewers out there. So Simon, thank you very, very much for very, very kindly sending along this wonderful sampling of Southern Witchcraft Shave Soaps. Folks, we'll have a link to the Southern Witchcraft website where you can check out all of their shave soap offerings. Thanks again, Simon. Really do appreciate it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Viewer Beth Jones sent along this heads up regarding Tabak shave soap. And she writes, hey Mark, Got this email from Bulgu Shaving regarding Tabak Shave Soap Stick. Tabak Shave Soap is a classic that has been around since 1959. Unfortunately, they reformulated the soap a year or so ago and, in my opinion, ruined it. When doing my end-of-year inventory, I came across a box of the good stuff, the new old stock tallow version of this wonderful soap. Pick up a stick or two while you still can, Beth Jones. And she sent along the link, and we will provide the link below, because it looks like Amazon no longer has the tallow version. I went up there, and uh, I looked around, and I found this review 
from uh, October of 2021, October 16th of 2021. Well, it looks like they have run out of the old formula with tallow stock. I ordered three. I received two of the old formula with tallow and one with the new formula without tallow. I'll be returning the new formula one as I have no interest in trying it. Rating is for the old formula as it is an excellent shave soap. And he gave it five stars. Uh, that was from October 16th of 2021. Uh, so there was kind of a mixture. You didn't know what you were getting. There was at one time, as I recall, there was a product page on Amazon where they said, this is the tallow formula. I don't think that exists anymore. Uh, this review also from the same product page, uh, no tallow false advertising. This is from May 4th of this year. Uh, May 4th, 2023. These do not have tallow. So it looks like the uh, source for tallow or new old stock tallow formulations of Tabak shave soap are gone. They're not on Amazon anymore, as far as I can see. However, Bulgush Shaving to the Rescue, thank you, Beth, for letting us know that the tallow-based formula of Tabak in a shaving stick is available at Bull Goose Shaving. Again, folks, Beth very kindly sent along the link, and we will provide the link below. And as she says, this is a great find for those who prefer the tallow-based Tabak shave soap. I absolutely agree. I have the tallow-based uh, shave stick right here. I also have uh, an extra puck of the tallow bay shave, shave soap, and I also have an extra puck in an unopened uh, milk white uh, shave bowl as well. So I'm pretty good for a while, but then again, <laughs> I might get up to bull goose shaving myself and grab a couple of these while they're still up there, because after that, it looks like you're not going to be able to get any more of the Tabak tallow-based formulation. So Beth, thanks very, very much for passing this along. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Bill Murphy sent along a really, really neat tip. And he wrote, Hi Mark, I came across this article about uses for silica gel packets. One of the uses is for using them to keep razors from moisture damage by storing them in a sealed container with a silica gel pack. These are the tiny little packets of desiccant that come in your new pack of shoes or your vitamins and other items. Great tip, even if you use them while traveling and put them in with your razor to help dry it out. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic, fantastic tip, Bill. Thank you very, very much. I usually throw those out <laughs> when I get them. Now I know to hang on to a few of them, maybe put them in a bag and kind of store them away so that when I do travel with my razor, I'll have a couple of those to uh, throw into a container to help dry out that razor, to help absorb that excess moisture. Really, really terrific, terrific tip. Thanks again, Bill. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewer Bill Murphy also sent along this cautionary note, and he writes, as far as the glue on razor blades, the attached picture shows what can happen if you don't remove the glue from a colored Rockwell 6S cap. Not sure what they use for a coating, but they are not anodized. I now put the blades in with the glue facing the razor base, and that works for me. I don't want to rub or wash the glue off because I am all thumbs and would end up cutting myself at some point. Thanks, and have a great week. Bill Murphy. Hey, Bill, thanks very much for sending along this photo. I thought these razors were anodized. Now, that is really, really unusual. If anyone can tell us how these uh, Rockwell 6S razors are coated and why the glue interacted that way, sure would appreciate it. But a cautionary note to either take that uh, glued side and go face down onto the base plate or maybe to scrape it off very, very carefully. Hey, Bill, thanks very, very much for sending along the picture and the cautionary note. Really, really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. 
They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Well, thanks again very much for tuning in on this New Year's Day. Happy New Year. I look forward to getting together with you each week during 2024. And as I always say when I wrap up, Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.